friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 34 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. This community means so much to me and hopefully it does to you too. We're so lucky to have so many great knitters out there. Um, so if you've stumbled upon this channel, it is a channel mostly about knitting. So if you love to knit as much as I love to knit, you're in the right spot. Today is January 19th and it's a Thursday. It's the perfect weather to knit, but I always think all weather is perfect to knit. Uh, it's rainy and dreary and perfect for knitting. So hopefully you have your knitting and I am going to just follow through with the same format I did on the last episode because you guys seem to like it. So you guys seem to like it. Uh, I just am going to show you what's off my needles, which I don't have a lot, and what's on my needles. And then I'm going to go into what our friends out there are working on. And hopefully you'll add something to your notebook or to your Ravelry account, into your queue or into your favorites. All right. So this, this is the Cuffle by Alexis Winslow. Yes, Alexis Winslow, and it's a pattern for Hudson and West, and I knit it out of the recommended or the pattern material yarn, and this is in Forge, the Hudson and West Forge. I've knit another sweater in Forge. I really like Forge a lot. It's a little toothy. I think it blooms nicely, and in this case, it blocked beautifully. I'll talk about that in a minute, but it is a top-down construction. You pick up below the rib. I mean, you start below the rib, so you don't do the rib yet, which was very helpful for my uh, neckline, which I will also talk about in a minute, but I'm trying to stay focused here. So you start and you start the pattern. Short rows along the top and in between each color work section. And uh, basically, that's it. I separated for my sleeves earlier than they recommended. They do have a couple of options of where to separate, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of low and that's kind of deep. And I know that I like 10 inches, so I separated below that second uh, color work section. Um, it is helpful to know what you like to wear uh, before going into any pattern. But if you have your numbers and then that's not what the pattern is, you know, following, then you can just adjust to make, make it fit for you. And I know I don't like anything too deep because I usually wear a coat and this is a sweater that I would probably need a coat for. It's heavy, but it's not that heavy. But, uh, so it's top down. I didn't make any adjustments with that except for the sleeve. I did a twisted rib because that's really the rib I prefer. And I just think it's a really neat rib by just knitting into the back loop and purling regularly. And the neckline called for uh, a pretty wide neck. And I saw that in the pattern and on some um, other people. And if I have a heavier sweater on like this, a toothier sweater, I want a tighter neck. Plus I'm always cold. So I, um, shortened that by just kind of, I tried it on after I bound off, you know, the sleeves and everything, because this is your final step. And I just kind of then grabbed it to where I liked the neck. And then I measured or I counted the stitches in that little piece of fabric and it was about 10 stitches. So I picked up the recommended amount. And then on the first round where I started the decreases, I knit two together, decreasing 10 stitches evenly around. Um, and that works great. So you can remember that little tip because uh, it's very helpful to shorten your neck when you are picking up the rib um, and working the rib last. Uh, so yes, I really do 
like everything about this sweater. I wanted at one point to throw it into the garbage because what happened is I like to work my, um, all of my knits on a 24 inch needle. That's my needle preference. I just don't like a big needle swooping around on my lap. So, and for most sweaters it works, but for color work, you need to spread those babies out, give them their space. And I thought I was being very mindful. And when I was carrying my floats, I was working double-handed, but I, you know, would spread it out before I made my float. But the puckering, you can see here how puckered it was. And I thought there is no way this is going to block out, but blocking truly is magical. So, this is pretty much blocked out. Um, I am gonna run the steamer on it. I feel like a steamer flattens it a little bit better, but yeah, for the most part, I think it, you know, blocked out pretty nicely. I'm gonna step back here so you can really see it. Um, it is a wider sweater, which I am so excited. And it has some drape, but it's not like a mohair, you know, fingering weight yarn would be, or lace weight. And yeah, I think it's really cute. All right, I have been wearing it all morning with this two-tone twist. I'm not sure I ever spoke about the two-tone twist on here before, but it is a just a twisted cow. It's very easy to make and uh, it takes two ball, two different colors of wolf oak far. And um, yeah, I just did two shades of blue. It's intended to be tonal, so two tones. And um, yeah, it's on a size eight needle, can I say. But this is one of my patterns and I've never talked about it before. So I wanted to share it with you. And if you wanna make one, use the code TWIST at checkout on Ravelry and you can get your pattern. Um, it's a perfect little wearable knit. And uh, yeah, I just like the way it, you can change the color. You don't have to have any color showing or you can, you know, show both. You know, it's all about the bond accessories. All right, so those are the things off my needles. This is an older one. I did not just finish that. Um, this is the only thing off my needles, I should say. And I am going to, did I tell you what colors these were? I don't think so. So this is the Forge. Um, this is an Ash. Hudson and West Forge in Ash, and this is Aspen. And like I said, I had wished I was, um, had made like navy and white, but I do love these now. I thought they were kind of blah, but I like the way it worked out. So anyhow, all right, let's get on to on my needles because I have to share this yarn. It is as light as a feather. This is the No Frills, um, you know, you guys have all seen it, I'm sure. Uh, no Frills by Petite Knits, and my daughter and I are both making one, but she took hers back to Spain, and I am working on mine here. So she had a little bit of a mishap. She dropped a stitch and kept knitting, so I have her going to a yarn store, and. Spain and she's very nervous that they're not gonna help her. I'm like, knitters are nice. I hope they're nice to her. <laughs> um, so anyhow, I told her just get a ball of yarn and then I'll them. <laughs> but anyhow, this is the No Thrills. No, that's very thrilling. No Frills. And it's an Uling yarn. And this is number 10, which has 10% cashmere and 90% super fine merino. It is dreamy, you guys. And then this is their number, wait, this was the number 11, sorry. 
number 11. I need to put on my glasses. And then this is the number 10. And oh, together, they are making that. Isn't that pretty? It's so light and delicate. I just feel like this is such a delicate piece of fabric here. Um, and I think this is something I don't have in my wardrobe that I could add to my wardrobe. I love this with camel. Mm, that'd be pretty with some camel pants, camel coat. Mm, love this. Um, oh, and this is the silk mohair blend. So these are both Lings yarn. It's a yarn shop in Denmark. And yes, very, very dreamy. All right, did I have anything else? I have one other thing I wanted to share before we get into everyone else's knits. Um, I've mentioned before, well, I've mentioned many times the Beatrice knits, but I, I told you I was teaching a class, which it's, a, it's on Rebecca Page. It's on her website. And um, Rebecca Page has knitting summits. And this is the 23 Winters Knitting Summit. And I was in, asked to be an instructor and I taught this class, filmed it. And so it's filmed and ready to go. So you can register now. I will put everything I talk about in on this video in the links below, but you can sign up now and it's free. The class will be from the 23rd to the 27th. So I know I've mentioned those before and given the pattern. So you've probably have the pattern downloaded and maybe you have the yarn. Uh, you can take that class for free or I think you can purchase the class at any time and uh, take the class at any time for your, anytime you want. So anyhow, I will link everything down below but wanted to mention that that is available now if you want to sign up to make those mitts. All right, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna dive in. Let me grab my computer and dive into what everyone else has on their needles. Also, you guys, I get so many questions about two things. One is this mannequin back here. This is my grandmother's. It's probably from the 30s. She was very young when she started uh, sewing and she sewed all her clothes and my mom's and my aunt's and um, anyhow, it's super old. So I don't have a maker, but yes, it's adjustable. I would definitely recommend having an adjustable one if you're the sewer or the knitter. I don't use it to measure my sweaters or anything just to hang sweaters on, but I treasure that. All right, and then the other thing is the carpet bags that I uh, carry my knitting bags and these are offhand design bags, but I had a couple of friends of ours share where they thought that you could find something similar. One is the Delaq website. They may have bags that look similar to that. And my friend Kim told me about Attenti bags, linked below here. They have some beautiful bags on that site. And then Jackie shared the Max Carpet Bag Works on Etsy. They're out of Canada and they make similar bags as well. So if you are interested in trying to hunt down a bag like that, I did message Offhand Designs because they are still in business. They just don't have that particular style anymore and uh, never heard back, but maybe they'll still. Sometimes I take a long time to get back to people too. So please be patient with me too. All right, I have my computer, my list. I'm gonna go ahead and cover my face up here and show you some of the things that our friends have on their needles. All right, Sarah. Our friend Sarah has the Magnolia Bloom by Camilla Vad. That is so cute. That has been in my list. That's in my book. It's a worsted. I love the bobbles and the lace work. I think this would be a pretty quick knit. And 
cute to boot. Anita is working on the Hepburn by Devin Venter. I am new to Devin Venter's designs and I love this little bundle of themed patterns she has regarding Audrey Hepburn. So she has the Hepburn and she has a Go Lightly and she has an Audrey. I like all of those. I went down the rabbit hole a little bit on those. Heather is working on the bloom vest. How cute is the bloom vest? This is an Erin weight. It is knit seamlessly in the round bottom up. So if you like the bottom up construction and would like a vest, I think this is darling. Okay. Christy, I might have mentioned her ascot before. If you are, I mean, you probably have made the petite knit scarf by now, but if you are interested in a different construction, it starts with an eye cord cast on and it's knit in all stockinette. Yeah, so if you are really into your ascots and want to try a different pattern. All right, Cindy G is working on Snowy Forest as well as Nan Jane. I say working on but you guys have probably already finished these. These were comments from November. So, but they are both working on Snowy Forest. I love Snowy Forest. Oh, Jackie from Caddy Jacks is finishing up a Snowy Forest. I love the oversized feel to this. Oh, I really like this little note from the uh, designer. It says, I wanted to knit a circle yoke pullover with the snowy and frosty cable pattern, like rime ice, freezing fog on branches and snow-covered trees. In North Japan, rime ice and snow cover trees thickly and build hulking shapes that are called snow monsters. So she says she has knitted voluminous snow monster cables and knitted and needle-shaped rime ice cables. I like that. Next up is Heidi and Heidi is working on, maybe she finished, the Pure Joy Shawl by Hohi Lakatel. And I think this is such a dainty, beautiful shawl pattern. Looks like the drape of the yarn used is perfect. Jacqueline Wilson, she lives in Tokyo and Jacqueline is working on the October sweater by Petite Knits. It looks to me like this is so easy to wear, so cozy. It is exactly like something you would want to work on in the fall or want to work on to have for the fall for when it first starts to get cold. It's a boyfriend sweater. It's so cute. I could actually have every petite knit design in my wardrobe. Catherine, Catherine Cunningham. Catherine is working on the Getting Warmer Cow by Espace Tricot. Love this cow. It's a little bit like the shrug that I have coming out, but the shrug has um, a little more structure, my shrug, along the shoulders. And this is one that you can just bunch up around your neck or pull down over your shoulders and it will always have the turtleneck. I'm so grateful for all of Espostrico's free patterns. All right, that's enough this time, I think. I don't wanna run over, um, spread them out, give you a little more. Uh, if you want me to share something that you're working on that you think is really interesting that others would like to see, then please feel free to leave me a comment about that uh, on the video. All right, guys, um, keep your fingers busy. Keep on casting on for those great knits out there. And uh, yeah, until next time, remember, you always have a friend to knit with. All right, take care. Bye. Oh, remember to download your pattern um, twist. And I'll leave that up for um, like 10 days. All right, take care. Bye.